Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, I'm running a bad team in the Open Ultra League, but it's for a very good reason. Today, I'm going hunting for the new meta monster Shadow for Alligator in the Open Ultra League with a team of three for Alligator counters. On the lead, I'm running Heliolisk as the safe switch, Galissapod, and as the closer, my level 50 shift tree. Now, you may notice there may have been a slight uh, punching related weakness that I had overlooked when team building. Surely that will not become an issue in the future. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and let's go hunting for Feraligator in the Open Ultra League. Hopping into the first match, picking up a very tricky lead, Heliolisk versus Guzzlord. Guzzlord can do pretty well against this entire team, so it's a problem. Heliolisk is probably the best counter that I have since it does have access to Breaking Swipe, and it's part of the reason why I did choose Heliolisk as my electric type of choice. As not only does it have the normal subtyping to double risk the Shadow Claw from Feraligator, but it can also hit the Guzzlord for super effective damage. They're going to land the Dragon Claw, I fire off the Breaking Swipe, get a shield, and now I'm going to save switch into Galissapod. Opponent fires off energy, that's very okay with me. It is going to be the crunch, and they do get the 30% chance at a defense drop. That is very unfortunate. I go for the Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace, not a particularly amazing move coming from the Galissapod, so the Guzzlord is able to withstand the damage, fire off the Dragon Claw, and Dragon Claw will get me low, and we see our target has been acquired as they send in a Shadow for Alligator. I go for the Liquidation, that's going to connect, and for Alligator gets a farm down. But now for Alligator is going to have to deal with a level 50 Shift Tree. Shift Tree is going to be shielding up as the Shadow for Alligator ends up baiting with the Hydro Cannon. And in this matchup, I realize I've made a mistake. This is my first battle with the team. I forgot that I still had Hurricane on the Shift Tree. I will be fixing that mistake a bit later on and going back to foul play. I try to make it to a move, but unfortunately, I end up getting Shadow Clawed down. Let's see what they have in the back. This can only be the Hydro Cannon, so I'm not too worried about this, as I will be able to withstand that damage. I'm going to get the full farm down. What do they have back there? I know about the Guzzlord, of course. In the back, they have Jellicent, and this game should just be a win. I go for the Leap Blade. As long as I can build up to two more Leap Blades, this game is over. Opponent is going to get the catch, which is a nice play, but unfortunately, I have another Leap Blade loaded, so the catch is not going to save them. I can over farm one more play to the CMP tie that Shiftry will win by an absolute mile. And despite a tough lead, they had a Feraligator, so we get the win. Picking up a positive lead in the next match, Heliolisk versus Giratina Altered. This is a Shadow Claw Giratina Altered, which means they have basically no fastball pressure here, which works out very nicely for me. They're going to land the Dragon Claw. I'm going to farm up and fire off the Breaking Swipe. Breaking Swipe again, able to hit for super effective damage. Giratina is quite bulky, so able to withstand that damage no problem. Heliolisk going to no shield this Dragon Claw and continue to farm. Heliolisk looking to make it to two more Breaking Swipes. Breaking Swipe number one into the Giratina will connect, and Heliolisk makes Breaking Swipe number two, and this should knock out unless the opponent is willing to go down a shield. They're gonna let it go. Down goes the Giratina. In comes Annihilate. I'm forced to stay in here because I am ABA weak to counter. Initially, I was looking at something like an Ampharos on the lead, but there were a lot of weaknesses with choosing that, so I decided, you know what? I'm going to go with the Heliolisk, and then I realized, oh, if I see a fighting type on the lead, I just lose. But in the back, speaking of losing, opponent has the Shadow for Alligator. Look at that Leap Blade damage. Oh my goodness. Opponent is going to bait with the Hydro, but they don't get to another move. They can send back in the Annihilate, but I have so much energy on the level 50 Shift Tree that I'm just going to be able to completely overwhelm them with Leap Blades. Leap Blade number one is going to be shielded. I'm very close to two more Leap Blades here. I believe it should be one more Snarl. The Leap Blade will be shielded. I'm able to make it to another Leap Blade. The Shift Tree Snarl Leap Blade spam gets them low, and we get the combo play with the Galissapod. So basically, if the opponent has a Feraligator, we should, by default, just win the game, which is kind of fun. Although, I'm still very concerned about that fighting weakness. Hopping into the next match, and Judgment Day has arrived, and its name is Annihilate. A fighting type on the lead is a massive, massive problem. I'm forced to stay in this matchup. Opponent doesn't throw energy yet. I build up to the Thunderbolt, bait with the Breaking Swipe, and my opponent is going to let that through. 
I believe I could have survived on one HP and made a Thunderbolt, so my opponent is going to fire off an Ice Punch to deny that energy. I send in Galissapod, hoping they stay in, but they pivot out. They understand that the Annihilate has value in the back. They pivot into Greedent, and this is a pretty big problem. I'm going to bank energy, send in the Shift Tree. Shift Tree farming up energy. Opponent will go for the Body Slam. Shift Tree can output a lot of damage, but it's very frail. Look at how much that Body Slam does to the Shift Tree. Shift Tree is going to survive another Body Slam, but it's already almost to the red health. I do have back-to-back -back Leap Blades, but Greedent is monstrously bulky, able to shake off that damage like it's nothing. Shift Tree going for yet another Leaf Blade. Leaf Blade is going to connect. Opponent able to take advantage of the desync timers and send back in the Annihilate. I shield up the Ice Punch. I'm going to save energy and send in Galissapod. Galissapod at the back-to-back -back Aerial Ace is throwing before my opponent gets a move. The Aerial Ace is shielded. Maybe there's a chance. Going for Aerial Ace number two. That is going to be shielded as well. This is a really tough call to make. I decide to shield and go for a farm down. They are going to full send the Shadow Ball. I do get the farm down. I still haven't seen that third Pokemon, but the fact that they double shielded makes me feel like maybe there's a chance. Oh, but they had a move banked. Honestly, I'd lost track of Greed and Stored Energy. The Body Slam is going to connect. I'm going to look to farm up as much as I can and go for the Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace, I'm hoping, is going to be enough to KO, and it is, and in the back, oh, you've got to be kidding me, it's Reggie Steel, and Reggie Steel, the entire team is pretty soft to it, like, as long as I still have shields up, I can kind of beat it with a committee of Pokemon, but shields down, there's just nothing stopping Reggie Steel versus this team. I'm able to get a debuff from the Liquidation, I send in the Shift Tree, go for the Foul Play, Foul Play, not going to cut it. And unfortunately, I feel like we made it about as close as we could, but Annihilate Bleed, just too much to handle. Moving to the next match, getting Heliolisk into Galarian Weezing. Okay, definitely happy to see this here, as Weezing's typing is a complete wall to Shift Tree. I decide to call it, calling that it's not the Overheat, and it's the Brutal Swing. That's a massive, massive call, and I'm now going to full send the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt will do some solid damage, opponent committing the shield, so the fact that they're protecting this makes me feel like they could potentially be weak to the Heliolisk. However, if I'm able to call another Brutal Swing, which I am, I'm going to be able to make it to another Thunderbolt. I still haven't used the shield. The opponent is going to let that through, but I'm unable to get the snipe, the wheezing. You can't even see the HP bar, but they're able to hang on and make one final charge attack. It is only the Brutal Swing that I take. Opponent sends in Tentacruel, and I go for the Liquidation. I'm going to try and fish for a debuff. It is a 30% chance at trying to get the debuff. And it looks like we did get the Defense Drop from the Liquidation. So going for the, for the Resisted move actually ends up working out there. They go for the Scald. The Scald does get the debuff on my attack. So it's basically like the damage is back to normal as my attack is lowered and their defense is lowered. In the back, they have a Lantern, and they're really going to regret the choice. They could have brought in the Tentacruel or the Lantern into the Galissapod. They chose to bring in the Tentacruel, and that's going to cost them, as now the Lantern is getting absolutely shredded by the Shift Tree. Leaf Blade connects, Shift Tree continuing to farm. Lantern going to fire off the Surf. Surf not going to be an issue for the Shift Tree. Shift Tree over farming very close to 100 energy. Going for an undercharge on the Leaf Blade that will still KO. In comes the Tentacruel. And now I have the back to back Leaf Blades. This is a terrible magic for the Shift Tree, but I have a massive energy head start. So I will go for the Leaf Blades back to back. Is this going to be enough to KO? Tentacruel is very bulky. The Tentacruel lives on 1 HP, but Shift Tree gets the Snarl down to take the win. Moving to the next match, Heliolisk into for Alligator. Let's go. And they save switch into a Tentacruel. Oh no, trainer. We time our catch, so we get the sneak of the Snarl and the catch of the Seed Bomb. And the opponent's team so far is completely core broken to shambles by Shift Tree. Now, Shift Tree has a lot of counters in this meta, but we happen to find one team that is completely ABA weak to it. They're going to have to send in whatever their final Mon is, and it's the Annihilate. Again, Annihilate, a massive problem for this team, but I have switch advantage. So I'm going to be able to put the Annihilate onto the Galissapod, and then I have the Heliolisk for the Feraligator. So this should just be a win at this point. I'm going to stay in, let myself get countered down, send in the Galissapod. Even if they go for the Shadow Ball, I do survive it. My lose con is shielding a Night Slash and getting a boost. I shield the Night Slash, which I absolutely should not have done. I should have just let it go. Thankfully, they did not get the boost, but that 100% was the lose con. 
From here, I'm just going to save the shield for the Heliolisk. They will full send the Shadow Ball. That does some sizable damage. In comes the Feraligator. And this is a non-Shadow Feraligator. I fire off the Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt connects massive damage to the Gator. Opponent sees the writing on the wall and concedes the match. Hopping into the next match, we need Heliolisk into another Annihilate, and this is just absolutely awful. I'm forced to stay in once again. The opponent plays it differently. They throw an Ice Punch or a Night Slash here, it ends up being the Ice Punch, but that doesn't actually KO. The opponent probably would have been better off just trying to go for a farm down. I'm able to land the Thunderbolt, and I've got a lot of damage onto the Annihilate. I send in the Galissapod. Opponent fires off a last second charge move, but this is short. This is only going to be the Ice Punch. They did not have enough for the Shadow Ball. I was able to get rid of the Annihilate, but my troubles are not over. In comes Registeel. Registeel will be hit with the Liquidation. And now I just need to fish for more debuffs and look to get more damage. The nice thing is I have a big energy head start. And in the two shield, the opponent is entirely reliant in this matchup on landing a Zap Cannon. So with two shields still in play, I'm going to be able to apply a lot of pressure to my opponent. They have the Lantern in the back. I don't understand. If they had just sent in the Lantern into the Galissapod, I would have been completely walled. I guess maybe they were expecting that I had x on there, but I really am not a big believer on x in and Galissapod. But that's, I believe, two games so far where Lantern users had the choice to just put it on the Galissapod, chose not to, and now the Lantern just gets absolutely bullied by XL Shiftry. Shiftry will full send the Leaf Blade just trying to get rid of the Lantern. Lantern commits the shield, but guess what, Lantern? There's more where that came from. Another Leaf Blade from the Shiftry, another shield from the Lantern. Opponent getting hit with a third Leaf Blade. They went from two shields to zero. They get KO'd, they still are unable to protect the Lantern, and the opponent resigns the match. Another game, another counter user. I'm forced to stay in, but at the very least, I can hit this one for super effective damage with the Volt Switch and Thunderbolt. Opponent fires off the Icy Wind. I do survive the Icy Wind. So I will be able to no shield and fire off the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt, even when debuffed, will do a lot of damage to the Polyrath. And the Polyrath is low. That's big. And I'm going to go for the farm down with the Galissapod. Opponent is going to save switch out of here, sending in the Shadow Gliscor. Gliscor will be met with the Liquidation. The Polyrath plus Gliscor core is a core that I featured quite a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if it was something like a Skeledurge in the back, as when I've run it, that's typically what I ran as my third. The opponent is at the back-to-back -back Night Slashes, and I'm kind of in a rough spot here. The Night Slash is going to connect. I should be able to make it to back-to-back -back Aerial Aces. I'm not quite sure if I have the Liquidation, though. I believe it is just going to be the back-to-back -back Aerial Aces, so I will go for the Aerial Ace. Apparently, I clicked it too late because I didn't get the move. I send in the Shift Tree, try and KO with the Leaf Blade, but they make just a back-breaking catch. They catch the Leaf Blade onto the Polyrath. And now, unfortunately, I'm just going to take too much damage on this Shift Tree. I'm going to let the Night Slash through. But even if I make it to the Leaf Blade, if it is going to be the Skeledurge in the back, like I'm thinking, then I just don't have enough HP. Show it to me. There it is. And I'm going to lose to my own team, which props to this opponent. They played it super well. They were able to make that catch. And that catch won them the game because I don't have enough HP and Skeledurge is going to farm me down. Moving to the next match, we see the Heliolisk into the Registeel. Heliolisk farming up energy. Opponent can go for the Focus Blast as soon as they get it, because when they throw the first, it's guaranteed to be on good timing. The Focus Blast will be shielded. I overfarm, and I fire off the Thunderbolt. And this, this is where the game gets to teach me how to play the game again, which is very nice, because I wasn't having the most amazing gameplay experience, so I decided to refresh the app and, like, re-download the assets, and that's always fun because then the game thinks you're a brand new player. I'm gonna double shield and just look to fully farm them down. Opponent gonna send in Dragalge, and now I'm expecting that this could be a variant of another team that I featured where I had Feraligator as the third. If it is, then I should be in an okay spot because Feraligator doesn't really have anywhere to run against this team. The Aqua Tail is going to connect. I make another Breaking Swipe. That is massive. That's, that, that, that is terrific. The Breaking Swipe will be shielded. I send in the Galissapod. They're farming up energy with the Dragalge. I'll go for the... I'll go for the... I almost said Aqua Tail. Aerial Ace, not Aqua Tail. It's Dragalge that has the Aqua Tail. They commit the shield, and that gives me hope that Shift Tree can do well in the back. They're running Gunk Shot. Goodbye, Galissapod. I send in the Shift Tree, and it is a Water-type. 
but it's not the water type I needed to see. It's Polyrath, and I'm going to lose this by one turn. Watch this. One turn short of the Leaf Blade. Absolute heartbreak. And the Icy Wind picks up the KO. Hopping into the final match, leading Heliolisk into Shadow Alolan Sand Slash. The Sand Slash is running Shadow Claw, which is good news for me, as they have no fast attack pressure. They're entirely reliant on landing a Drill Run. A Drill Run, I believe Heliolisk can survive, but it does almost all of your health. After shielding, I'm going to over farm and full send a Thunderbolt. Opponent is going to commit the shield. I continue to farm. Opponent over farming quite a bit as well. The Thunderbolt, if they shield, I'm going to wait two turns and try and catch onto the Galissapod. My catch attempt is unsuccessful, but I'm able to lure out a Tentacruel. A Tentacruel needed to be baited out as, of course, Poison Jab would absolutely shred through the shift tree. I go for the liquidation, fishing for the debuff, but I am unsuccessful. I decide, you know what, if at first you don't succeed, I'm going for yet another liquidation. I have fished for those debuffs. My opponent is going to overform quite a bit. I'm able to make it to yet another liquidation. This liquidation is going to get Tentacruel very low. Tentacruel will fire off their energy. If it's a Scald, I do survive it. It is going to be the Scald. I switch out at the last possible second. I was trying to snipe, but unfortunately they do react in time and they land the Blizzard. In comes the Sand Slash. They have a ton of energy. I just have to let this go. I have to save the shield for the shift tree. Shift tree, this is going to be tough. Oh, they blind switch into a Jellicent. I was going to say, it would be tough to see if I could outpace before they made another ice punch. But the opponent blind switches into the Jellicent. And Jellicent doesn't really have anywhere to run against this team either. A little bit like the Feraligator. I can over farm with the shift tree. Play to a CMP tie that shift tree will easily win. The Leap Blade will pick up the KO. And I have the foul play loaded for the Sand Slash as well. So final game, we didn't get to see a Gator, but much like the Feraligator, the Jellicent had nowhere to run either. All in all, I had a lot of fun getting to run this team. As I mentioned at the start, I would classify this as a bad team. Being ABA weak to fighting types is not something that I would recommend. I was initially looking at other Electro types that weren't weak to fighting, and then was like, hmm, I'm kind of triple weak to Guzzlord. So I switched it up to the Heliolisk, and then after a couple games, saw an Annihilate, and was like, I've made a mistake. Overall, I think I did go about even with the team over the course of quite a few games, but man, definitely... I think that hunting for for alligator is a viable strategy, but being ABA weak to counter, definitely not. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.